to know is, why is it that places like Buffalo, New York, upstate New York in general, that have experience with these blizzards, snowstorms, why they don't have vehicles to respond to crisis situations when people get stuck? so that they can save lives. Because I bet you a dollar to a donut, if they were out on a battlefield, they could reach anybody. They got the vehicles to reach people if they really wanted to save somebody, right? First of all, let, let me debunk that. First of all, Willie D, there's a difference between driving a tank in jungle or desert and driving a tank in snow with civilians in cars that you can't see. You can't just drive a huge truck through that stuff when you can't even see where the cars are because you're liable to roll over somebody now. You're liable to roll over somebody's car now. So, you know, if that sounds good, but emergency vehicles, bigger emergency vehicles is not really the answer. Everything I'm about to say, you already know it's going to be You are a slave. You are a slave to money, to social economics, to status, to politics, to ideology. You have sold your soul to have a place in a world order that you should naturally oppose. Let's talk about this blizzard in Buffalo from a perspective that I haven't heard anyone talk about it from yet. Willie D did a video based on the uh, unfortunate passing of, of this young lady. And the first thing I thought about was, why was she out there? Why was any of those people out there? Willie D goes on to say, we know in advance that the blizzard coming. People know three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten days in advance. Yes, they do. They got to go to work. This is the problem. You have to go to work. The need for money makes you desperate. And when you get desperate, you take chances. The only difference between these people and the dude on the street corner that y'all want to call Pookies and Ray Rays is that they are out there doing it that way and you are taking a chance by going to that job every day. Now, the job is usually a much safer bet. But it's times like this when you see the problem with this system. It's days like this when people have to go to work on icy roads, sliding all over the place. They still need to travel for work. Slipping and sliding, ended up in ditches and ravines and frozen lakes and all kinds of stuff. Freezing to death in blizzards. These are the things that's wrong with our system. These are the things that's wrong with the way we live as human beings. No human being should need to work that bad. The cost of living with something that God gave us for free, by the way. We have to pay a human being to live. And y'all okay with this? You get dudes like Willie Dick and talk about anything and everything wrong except what's really wrong. We shouldn't be living the way we live. That's the problem. That's the problem. We should not be living the way we live. There should be no cost to live. Allah gave us life, not no man, not no white man, bro. We in this country of, of, of 320 plus million people being totally controlled and dominated by less than 500 people. Even if you count every other government in every other state, you still get less than 2,000 people. Think about that. We are controlled through and through, top to bottom, by a fraction of a fraction of a fraction of our population. They own us. And they're able to own us 
Because you Negroes, you educated Negroes always talk about chattel slavery, chattel slavery. Y'all wonder why, why white folks are so, why the system is so proud of that heritage? Y'all ever thought about why they, they put it on the, on the naturalization test and everything? Why they so, why, why, why they so, you know, happy up to talk about that? Because the more you think of slavery in the terms of chattel slavery, the less you think of slavery in the terms of the slavery that you actually live under. You can't see the chains on you because you're looking for physical chains. You can't see what's going on with you because you're looking for a type of slavery that has never existed. We've never been slaves to that degree. We have always been slaves in this system to the degree that we are right now. And it's only gotten worse as time went on. Because at one time, we still lived somewhat off the land. But by the turn of the century, really, man, I would say by, by, by the 1960s, 1950s, it was dead. It was dead. They had us. And from that moment, they started turning the screws on us, slowly but surely. But the one thing they needed to do was get more black people to buy into the system. And that came through with the help of feminism. Once black women got on feminism, started talking about they want the educations, I want to be power, you know, all this stuff, it was over. And then come the 80s, black women talk about, I can't find a man that has a compatible education. I need an educated black man, so not a black man want to do what the women want to do so now they talk about education and stuff and i'm black and i'm proud you know what I'm saying say it loud and, and you know and now you got jackson jackson he he just takes it upon himself to call us african-american something that we never called ourselves before he just pops out and calls us african-american we have been duped by a certain class of educated negroes they have put us in chains by telling us that we come from chains that were physical when we never did. So now we are really wearing chains around our minds because we can't see what's really wrong. How you can look at people dying in a blizzard and all you can think about is emergency vehicles instead of saying to yourself, why were they out there? Why do they have to go out there? When we had that freeze a couple of years ago out, out here in Texas, you know, I'm from New Orleans, but I live in Dallas now. When we had that freeze, people dying in their homes because the electric company cutting off the, uh, off the power. And for the ones that the power stayed on for, they had 30 and $40,000 bills in a matter of a week and a half, two weeks. How you justify that? And they had to pay it. They had to figure out a way to pay. It took all these people's savings and everything. How do you justify this, bruh? This is the problem, Willie D. Not emergency vehicles. We shouldn't have to work like that. The need for money makes you desperate. And when you get desperate, you take chances. This is how I end up with all these bullet holes in my body, knife wounds and all this and stuff, been shot on two different occasions, stabbed. I've been all kinds of, you know, melees and dislays and all kinds of stuff. How do you think I ended up on that path? Because the need for money makes you take chances. Y'all think y'all take the safe way out when y'all just go get a job. But the economy is getting harder and harder to survive in, even with a job. Rents are constantly going up. The cost to even afford a roof over your head is constantly going up. They don't want us to survive. They don't want us to survive. So what y'all do is y'all turn around and y'all y'all just nitpick and blame something instead of blaming the right thing. The way we live is a problem. The way we, this dependency we have on money is a problem and it's you know it's not so bad you know the, the the real problem is that they don't have a pause but these people don't have a break they just go and go and go and go see y'all don't understand how the people at the top think because they are extremely prejudiced i, I want to say this right in bias they're full of biases they're not only racist they're classist now, you know, every white person you talk to will tell you, well, racism, no, this is all about class. No, racism is very real. 
So these people not only hate black people and non-whites non just because they are non-white, but they hate certain classes of whites also. So they're not gonna cut no slack on white people either. So when they go in there to make their policy, they are driven by an ideology of complete hatred and, 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 and complete, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, indifference towards how their policies affect people. They don't care. They don't care. So they continue to make it harder and harder and harder for you to survive. Because the way they look at it, if too many of y'all get through, let's say this year you had five people became millionaires. What they do is they just makes it harder to survive off a million dollars. They just increase. They keep moving. So they make the millionaire now basically, you know, middle class. It's what they do. And they're gonna keep moving the goalposts and keep moving the goalposts until we stand up as a people and say no more. But I don't know when we're gonna do that. I can't see us doing it. We seem to be just fine with letting these people destroy us. No one should have to be out in that kind of weather to go to a job. All jobs should be shut down. They knew that storm was coming, like, like what did he say a week in advance? Two days before that storm hit, a day and a half at least, people should have been allowed to leave work early to go take care of their affairs. Everything should have been shut down for the next day. No, they make you go to work anyway. This is the whole problem during the whole Lockdowns, the Kojo lockdowns, I definitely won't say that word. That was the whole problem during the Kojo lockdowns. People needed to work because people still had bills to pay. So the government did come through and come out with these stimulus checks and all this and stuff that help people get over and stuff, you know, time off. You know, but they had to do that. That really wasn't a favor to you because what they really wanted was to condition you to be locked down was to condition you to do what they say do to take away your own liberties. This is supposed to be a free nation. We're not supposed to have a lockdown. And that's another thing they did in New York. They issued an emergency order. Now they got military troops out there stopping people from being outside. Who wants to be outside in that? The only people that are outside are people that have to be outside. The only people driving through that are the people that have to drive through that. Trust me, nobody who didn't need to be driving was going to be driving through that madness. But it's the way we live and y'all never talk about that. Y'all never talk about the system itself. And I'm going to end with saying it once again. The need for money causes us to become desperate. And when you become desperate, you take chances. The dudes on the corner the dudes that sell dope, the dudes that, that, that pull cons, they are just taking chances because of an economic system that we live under. You people that go to college, put yourself in hundreds of thousand dollars of, of debt before you even get a job. Most of y'all have mortgage type debt at, at, at the age of 23, 24 years old, and you never pay it off. That's a chance you took. You just took it financially, but you took that chance because the system makes us all desperate and do things that we wouldn't otherwise do. Tell me, how many of y'all would actually go to college if we live simpler? How many of y'all would actually do whatever you're doing now? How many of y'all would be doing that if we live a more natural, simple life? None of y'all. Most of because most jobs are systemically created anyway. Most jobs wouldn't exist otherwise. They, they literally created things within the system for us to do, to justify the system. And y'all think we need these things. We don't need these things. We'd be just fine without most of it. I'm telling my brothers and sisters, y'all need to simplify y'all lives. Y'all need to think about what y'all doing because this stuff is running out. I don't know why y'all holding it up. We as black Americans damn sure should not be trying to hold this together. We should let it crumble. 
We should hope it crumbles because this has never been our system. This has never been our way of living. And now one of our sisters that we know of, I'm pretty sure some of the other people that passed away in that blizzard were black, people that passed away in hurricanes and, 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 and ice storms and, and, and all this kind of stuff because the, the energy companies cut electricity off. When the truth of the matter is, we all can have a form of a, of a localized generator right there in our homes. I don't mean a generator in terms of something that run off gas or anything like that. Electricity is in the air, it's omnipresent. All you need is the right things in the room to generate it. I know the problem is the perpetual motion thing. I discussed this with people before. The perpetual motion thing can be solved. The problem is we don't think outside of the box anymore because we can solve that. It's all engineering. It's all engineering. And this current term is electrical engineering. But my point is we could live better. We can have energy that's free and abundant that never goes away, but they don't want to do that. Y'all keep talking about they do everything for money. These people don't care about money. Money is their tool. Money is their power source over us. They themselves don't care about money. You care about money. You need the money. They don't care about the money. Soon as you understand that, you'll start looking at all of this differently. Just think about it. Money makes us desperate. Money causes you to lose your soul causes you to do things that you would never do. Put yourself at, at risk and harm. We don't need money, people, because God gave us life and God gave us the earth and the earth provides everything we actually need. Like the video, share the video, subscribe to the channel. Until next time, I'm out of here, Brother Kush, AKA The Black Alpha, Swan.